first of which was just to give you guys a heads up that there are just a couple of things going on. Um, very shortly, we're going to have a sign up for the banquet for this year. It'll be on the website. And it's going to be the weekend between the championship game and the Super Bowl, right? So there's always a weekend in between. So there's no football that weekend. So no one will be missing anything. There's that weekend gap between the championship game and the Super Bowl. So it'll be that weekend. I'll put out what that exact day is. That's going to be the weekend. Um, so it's going to be in February. To answer your question. Um, and it'll be the weekend before the Super Bowl. So the other couple of things that are going on is I wanted to give folks just a little tiny bit of an update on a couple of legislative things that we've been keeping our eye on. And um, first, I want to thank anybody that spoke at the Todd hearings in Massachusetts. Uh, I really appreciate people taking the time to either send an email or to actually be on the hearing. Uh, we're hoping that they're going to match Rhode Island's ranks in terms of the trophy top. So thank you all very much. I'll keep you updated. There's still a bit to go in that process. Um, but Massachusetts is going to officially, before Christmas, announce what their recommendation is based on the hearing. And then that's going to have to go to, it's either the New England Council or the, um, the, the try to get the right alphabet to see, see but um, yeah, the Mid-Atlantic States Fisheries Council, it's going to go to one of those. But it would probably be approved because it's not, it wouldn't seem likely it would be objected to at that point. So, so I think we might win on that one, but we're going to have to keep our fingers crossed. But I appreciate everybody that kind of came out and you just said it's working in Rhode Island or that they fish in mass and they'd like to see the same rules. So thank you for that. Uh, appreciate that. There are a couple other things. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Attorney General in Rhode Island published a letter, kind of a public letter last week, supporting the uh, Spring Ave becoming an official right away in, in Rhode Island. So Rich is probably going to add on a letter saying we, that makes sense and we think that's the right thing. Uh, technically, CRMC has kind of got to fight the battle, but the Attorney General weighed in kind of in support of making that a right away. There's a fire district that would like to not have that happen. Is um, it maybe the week about the fire district? Is that anybody familiar with? That's correct. It's right. the week of yeah, the week of Park fire district. And it's like, not really a fire district either. It's got nothing to do with fire. It's yeah. Just a, a homeowners group. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, right? For guys who follow the, the fire districts have become kind of like I won't get you guys down the rabbit hole of legislation, but towns are created these fire districts that um, are basically not used to prevent fires, but they're used to take away land that uh, might be used by the public. So this is one of those cases. So anyway, the Attorney General wrote a public letter supporting the spring out right away. And uh, so we'll probably tap on a letter and we'll try to get some other groups to support that. So hopefully that happens. Um, the last little thing legislatively that I want to talk about is um, for the folks that follow Strike Bass, there was a big amendment that went through called Amendment 7 that we pushed a little bit and a lot of people on the, on the regional East Coast level pushed. And it was to try to dial, kind of tighten up some of the regs in some of the states that like to play loose, kind of fast and loose with the strike the regs. And one of them is, without getting into too much detail, there's this thing called conservation equivalency. And that's what allows states like, say, Jersey to have a different set of size rules than the rest of the East Coast. There was this regs that were passed, put the screws to that, and if they did a conservation equivalency and it didn't work for the first time, the states were going to be held accountable, and it was going to come out of basically next year's, you know, deal. Uh, and that passed, but there was one little tiny caveat that got slipped in, and that was if striped bass were considered overfished. And believe it or not, the results have just come out, and the good news is, is that the slot limit according to the east coast and managers is working and so for the first time in i don't know how many years now straight bass is not it's still considered in trouble the stock's not where it should be but it, for the first time this last year it was not considered overfish or overfishing was not a current right rich that's actually the term technically right 
Rich is the expert, by the way. I'm like uh, the kindergartner up here uh, with legislation. But um, the bottom line is, the good news is, for the first time in, I don't know, maybe six years, striped bass is not considered being overfished. Overfishing is not taking place. But the bad news is, because of that, all this Amendment 7 stuff, a lot of it doesn't kick in. So for the short run, states are still able to, to use conservation equipment. So we're, we're, we're going to complain. There's a hearing in Rhode Island and a hearing in Mass coming up about that and a couple other things. So we'll certainly let them know we're not happy. But that's why that, if you guys have seen our social media, there's been kind of a blow up about certain Mass. That's the short of that. So all right, I probably talked enough about that. We, RISA, has a need. Um, we're kind of going through a little bit of a turnover with some of our committee chairmen. Some of our committee chairmen have been chairmen for, what, years? Probably decades, uh, right? Decades, maybe? Back there? At least, a couple. At least yeah, maybe a couple <laughs> decades. Right, maybe multiple decades. So we're looking for people that would consider becoming part of and perhaps chairman of the Merchandise Committee. We Merchandise Committee just kind of needs some help or if you become a chairman, you can get help. Um, Gary has been the merchandise chairman for years, and he knows it inside and out, but he would like a little help. Um, and then we also have the charter committee, which we got two volunteers last month to help. We could use somebody that would either want to be part of that again, or maybe become the chairman of the charter committee. That's the committee that gives away the free charters, usually in the spring and early summer meetings. Um, so if you're interested in that, please come see me because we could use a little help with that. Um, it would be great to have a charter captain even that could do that maybe just to kind of help jiggle the chains. Um, it doesn't have to be a fishing charter, by the way, just a charter. Um, and then also the fundraising committee, which is the raffle table, the guys I was kind of teasing in the back there. Um, we could use some folks to help out with running the raffles. So technically that's the uh, fundraising. So please come see me after we get going with this if you would be willing to be part of and especially chairman of any of those three committees. Uh, they're fun and they really do help the club kind of keep doing what the club does. Um, so I covered the banquet a little bit. That sign ups will be on the website. We have three committees, the merchandise, the charter, and the fundraising that need some help. 